so close, so close. That's the hole you can see right there. What's going on, everybody? Today we're out here to test the West. Some of you recall I made a video where I constructed a historically accurate 1800s Wells Fargo Stagecoach Strongbox, and this is the end result. You can see the whole video if you want to watch that. But in a lot of the historical sources, they talk about how these robbers would take these boxes and break into them, but they use different techniques to do so. So what we're going to do is we're going to try out some of these historical techniques that robbers supposedly use, and we're going to see how accurate that is. So in combing through the archives from the late 1800s, there appears to have been a handful of ways in which robbers gained access to the contents of a stagecoach strongbox. The first and easiest was to simply use a key. Such was the case in an 1877 article from the Deadwood Times, which stated that five masked robbers held up a stagecoach and quote, opened the lock of the treasure box with a skeleton key, which may or may not have come from the driver. Another and much more exciting way of gaining access to the valuables inside the strongbox was to shoot the lock off. An 1889 article in Nevada's Daily Independent tells of a bandit who stopped the stage, then quote, demanded and received Wells Fargo's treasure box, the lock of which he broke by shots from his revolver. Hollywood loves this trope, which makes an appearance in several famous Western films, including the 1962 classic, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. Far and away, this film gives the most historically accurate depiction of a stagecoach robbery I've ever seen in a movie. Even the strong box and padlock are damn near perfect. Somebody did their homework here, so kudos to them. In contrast, consider the movie 310 to Yuma, which features one of the most ridiculous, over-the-top stagecoach robberies ever to grace the silver screen. Funny enough, I actually really like the movie, but yeah, that's not how stagecoaches were actually robbed. Still, they do manage to end the scene by shooting the lock off the treasure box, so there's a bit of redemption there, I suppose. Historically, the most common way for robbers to gain access to the contents of a stagecoach strongbox was to use an axe. An 1897 article tells of a Washington stagecoach that was robbed by a group of bandits who forced one of the passengers to, quote, break open the treasure box with an axe. An 1885 article in the Arizona Champion relates a story of a stage leaving the vulture mine, which was held up by two masked men. According to the article, quote, with the aid of an axe, the treasure box was broken open and a bar of vulture bullion valued at $5,400 was taken out. In the wake of an 1893 stagecoach robbery outside San Francisco, a reporter remarked that, quote, of clues there were no lack, an axe lay beside the wrecked treasure box. Considering all this, we're going to attempt to gain access with the two latter approaches, that is, a gunshot and an axe. Now, of course, we don't want to use this box, right, because we spent an inordinate amount of time building this box and it costs a lot of money, so we're actually going to be replacing this box with a dummy box which you'll see my dad bringing in here. And this dummy box is gonna hopefully replicate some of these tests without destroying the good one. Okay, so the padlocks, in case you're wondering, these padlocks are the same ones that they used historically on the Wells Fargo Stagecoach Strong Boxes. They're manufactured by a company called JHW Climax and Company. This is an 1800s JHW Climax Company padlock. We have several of these to test out. So that's what we're going to be using for these experiments today. Here we go. After securing the rifle in a gun vise and taking appropriate cover, let's see if there's anything to this myth. Everybody ready? Fire in the hole! Blew it right off. Hit it? Yeah. So look, like, look at that. No ricochet, went right in, busted the, the thing, and it flipped it right off. And there you guys can see the bullet is just stopped. Yep. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> Dead in it. So Mythbusters, we proved it right. <laughs> you can do it, at least with an 1800s You lock. can. All right, now that we've proven that a standard round from the late 1800s can easily defeat padlocks from the period, it's now time to see if an ax can do the same. All right, have at it, buddy. All right, now I'm gonna try that on the back, because I don't think that's gonna get much. Look 
can break through the right. wood before I break through this. <laughs> All right, so Cyber took a lot of swings at this thing, as you saw. Uh, obviously, it's kind of humorous in that this this junk uh, is still all here. There is a lot of damage to the lock, but it, it hasn't opened. So we were kind of thinking that it makes sense to us that the axe was maybe used to break open the box, opposed to breaking the lock. Because yeah. he tried it. Right oh. with the sharp edge, he tried it with the yep. back edge. And of course, we know there aren't the iron bands the on iron this, bands but things like that. It's not as reinforced as the other. I ones. still would have gotten through the iron bands. I just Yeah, but I think you, know. you can still get through it. <laughs> God, I sure hope that people in the comments aren't going to say, Great, why don't you make another one with the iron bands and right. into that and see if that works? Oh but I think you could still break into it. I mean you could still break into the top. Right. You could still break into the bottom, I think, or the sides easier than you could from the front yep. and back but Absolutely. at least from our experiments here it seems way easier to shoot the lock off than to, to take an axe to it like if someone had a, a gun they just walk up they didn't care like they wanted what is in the box boom. if you're running from the law like that was quick like, boom you take the stuff out you leave That's the box the like in the interest of speed you shoot it off and you get out of it yep but yeah, I think I think the general idea is that to me it yep. just says, look, like it makes more sense to shoot this thing off than it does to to try to knock it off with an axe. Absolutely. Or bust through it with an axe if yep. you are gonna use an axe, yep. rather than trying to knock the actual lock off. And these were the locks, this is what they used. And it didn't go anywhere, man. You you laid no. into this thing. Yeah, I hit the lock almost every single time. Yeah, I mean there and there's some like cuts on it, but right. nothing that would indicate that you're getting in it any time. Nope. There you have it. Oh, geez, man, you're a beast. Try to work out a little bit. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, some final thoughts and notes I wanted to add here. In reflection, our tests appear to indicate that this is one of those times where Hollywood gets it right. Indeed, you can shoot an 1800s padlock off a stagecoach strongbox using period appropriate ammunition. Both our tests and primary sources from the period confirm this. While you won't have much luck breaking the lock off with an axe, you can, however, break the box open with one. Initially, I assumed that bandits were using axes to knock off the padlocks, but after our experiments and carefully rereading the newspaper accounts from the time, it's clear that the boxes were split open or broken open with an axe. And even though we weren't directly setting out to test this, the results quickly confirmed that it could be accomplished in just a couple minutes. Of course, it was still significantly faster and easier to shoot the lock off with a gun. So seeing that time was certainly of the essence, that was clearly the best way to go. But what if you didn't have a gun? Or an axe for that matter? Such was the case with one very unlucky bandit detailed in an 1875 article from California's weekly Trinity Journal. Upon robbing the stagecoach, it seems that the desperado didn't plan ahead. For quote, after committing the robbery, he failed to find any means of opening the box. As such, he picked up the hefty box, mine weighs 40 pounds empty by the way, and carted it around for two miserable days. Until walking with it Monday night, he quote, fell into a railroad cut a distance of 18 feet and broke his foot and leg. He then crawled three quarters of a mile to a Chinese camp, carrying, or rather dragging, the box with him. Here he got an axe and broke open the treasure box and secured the contents. He then stole a horse and was escaping when he was taken prisoner. Moral of the story, plan ahead. Now before you head down the trail, if you folks enjoyed the video, please make sure you give it a like. And if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, well, you know what to do. There's a lot more of this content on the way, so stay tuned, folks. Till next time, keep your nose in the wind, your eye along the skyline, and watch your top knots, pilgrims. We'll see you out on the trail. All right. <laughs> like it was one shot, boom, lock is off. Yeah, I think it makes Quick. more sense to... Look at the new guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, it'll go good in the outtakes. <laughs>
thank you folks for watching. If you want to further support my efforts, you can do so on Patreon or buy some gear for the modern frontier from the Man vs. History Outfitter Shop. You'll find both those links down in the description. Alrighty folks, just before I go, I want to make sure that I thank my Patreon patrons. So special thank you to my gold tier patrons, The Innocents, Ashley Gertensen, Hurt and Wade, Man vs. Moose, Bryce V, Cyber, Montgomery Johnson, Will S. Baker, Joshua Bale, Rich Christensen, Comrade Krieger, Epic Dale, Sean Hatfield, Blake Graham, Dawson E, Zonk Breezes, Noah Oven, David Perkins, Sneaky Ninja, Noah5943, Jigsaw, Your Pal Mitch, Old Hog Nose, Coco Rockout, Occam's Ghost, Reese Yearby, Ari Bacalers, Mythical Beast 60, and Gavin Abernathy. Also want to make sure that I thank my silver and bronze tier patrons as well. It's you Patreon supporters that allow me to keep doing everything I do here. Thank you all for your ongoing contributions. Let's keep growing. Let's keep making some awesome content. There's much more to come, so stay tuned. See you all next time.